uh, who are like, brr, um, when he's getting kicked out of the game. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. Like, that this is, is so, so it funny. It wasn't even planned. No. It All was right, we're just, we're just riffing here. I'm cool. catching up with Kevin Funk, who I have known for over 10 years mm-hmm. when we were both working at the Banff World Film Festival or World Festival, whatever it was called then. <laughs> and I've been watching his career with such interest. So here he is back at tip for his third time, this time with his first feature film, Hello. Fourth Dist- time. Fourth, Fourth time, yeah. Oh my God! Three See? shorts here, Three. and then this one. I'm sorry, it's so hard yeah. to keep track. That's of what okay. You're that's doing, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Destroyer is a very serious film, taking a look at hockey that a lot of people don't look. It's first of all, it's so filled with testosterone, mm-hmm. and I think that's the divisive part of hockey, isn't it? Some people love that about it; it's so bloodthirsty, and some people really are kind of gun shy about it. Yeah, no, um, I mean, I'm like a big hockey fan myself, and the film the film is meant to be, especially specific to hockey, the, the film's meant to be, you know, one of these things that can be a, a lot about a conversation around something. As a, Like, I didn't really want to make a film or spend two years working on something that's like, just my opinion on whether fighting is good or bad. Like, right. I, I was very uninterested in that. And to that point, I mean... I've I've talked about the film a lot being sort of like hockey is the setting not the subject even though like I think someone can watch it and they're like oh it's a hockey movie about hockey to me a lot of the film is really rooted in more of like a broader um, question about systemic issues of violence like I, you know if I had made this in the US I probably would like put it in the military this story right. or something like that so um, but yeah that you know the masculinity comment is is interesting too because I think like I think masculinity is one of like the most hilariously frail things, um, and uh, and it's so problematic all the time. It leads to so much stupid shit in the world. Uh, to be very blunt, uh, so but it, but it's something that I've always been interested in, and my work is is sort of exploring that because um, like Tyson is this interesting character in that like in one way, especially on a superficial level, he is, you know, such an image of masculinity, mm-hmm. but the character is actually, like, quite introverted and yeah. quiet and shy. And very sweet. Yeah, and very sweet. He's yeah, very yeah. sweet. He's, like, yeah. a soul looking for connection. Totally. Yeah, yeah. He's not, like, a... I didn't want to have, like, the dumb thug, thug type thing, because mm-hmm. I don't think that... That's one thing that I think is, like, you know, I've, I've been interested in, like, the hockey movie thing, I think, is, is, like... I love that this film is, like, a hockey movie, but not a hockey movie, because... Some of my problems with the hockey movie thing, and there's been some very good hockey movies made as well, but generally I think it trades on so many tropes and cliches that don't really say that much about Canada, that much about the actual sport, or the actual people in those sports, right. you know? Like the the goon character, I'm not talking specific to goon the film, but I mean the goon character in hockey films is often like this dumb, mm-hmm. sort of thuggish guy um, when, you know, if you if you look into those people's lives as you know doing a bunch of research like a lot of them are really interesting intelligent people yeah. you know you know so. i find that with uh, we were just talking to jared and we connected over mma a lot of mma oh, yeah. fighters are actually very intelligent for sure people for sure who come yeah from backgrounds ranging from law to accounting there but they have this perception of being just dumb yeah thugs yeah yeah exactly now there's a scene where uh tyson is standing with his newfound friend at, at the at the edge of the slaughterhouse and he's mm-hmm. looking out to the big bright world mm-hmm. and he's shrouded in darkness behind mm-hmm. him and he just wants to get out into that big world but mm-hmm. he can't because he's mm-hmm. just stuck in that darkness yeah no uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of i think i'm like pretty like i try to be pretty like strict and, and pretty rigorous in terms of like the formal applications of the elements of film that i'm using to tell so much of the story because mm-hmm. the story is a very quiet internalized story um, and so it's nice to have, like, I think you need to take advantage of, you know, things like the sound design in the film, which uses a lot of silence and a lot of yes. empty space often yeah. to create this. really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big, I'm a huge, huge fan. And, and Eugenio Bagtalia, who's our sound designer, did, like, a absolutely incredible job. Uh, really, I think, like, bold, brave sound design. Um, uh, because silence is, like, kind of a terrifying thing for people to work with sometimes. Yeah. But I really love it because of... Um, and as, as, especially sort of replacing score with uh, with just sound design often because I think I love score and there can be beautiful score but even the score we did use in this film I wanted always to have a certain level of ambiguity mm-hmm. because score can be that thing that just pushes you so directly sure. towards a feeling or an emotion yeah. and I love I love that 
you know, using sound design and, and particularly silence, you kind of put the onus a little bit on the audience member themselves to something. feel something yeah. and, and discover what, what it makes them feel as opposed to pushing something on mm -hmm. them. It yeah. reminded me in some ways, not at all subject matter wise, but in terms of the use of silence of Meet Joe Black. Like I've never film. actually seen really? that film. It's no. a very long film. Oh. No wonder they had so much silence. It's almost three yeah. hours. I guess it was hard to come up with so much dialogue. But that movie, too, really moved you in the moments of silence. Yeah, like the, the big influence for me um, that has been like a profound, it's like a touchstone film for me in, in terms of influence is Todd Haynes' film Safe, um, which is sort of Julianne Moore's breakout movie. Um, and that is like one of the most intelligent films, uh, I think, ever. It's probably my favorite film of all time. Um, in terms of using sound design and silence to create this insane underlying tension. Like the film's almost like a horror movie without like a, a monster. Right. Um, and, uh, and it's really crafted so much through a lot of that sound design. Um, it, it's a really, it, it's like a great movie to watch for that. It's like the top, top example in my book. As is Hello Destroyer. So when it comes out to the theater near you, you have to go see it. And if you're still around at TIFF, uh, I think there might be a screening or yeah. two to see. Uh, we've got, I don't, I think we have one press in industry somewhere in there, but we do have a public screening on uh, Sunday night. I don't, don't know exactly what time, but on this, on the 18th, we got uh, one last screening at the festival. There you go. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you so Good much. Good to talk to you.